So hi everybody, this is Carol Bryant and I am here live with Dr. Katie Nelson today for our Google Hangout on air. And hello Katie, can you see me okay? I certainly can. How are you, Carol? I'm good. How are you this morning? I am great. I'm great. I'm coming to you guys live from WTOP Radio in Washington, D.C. That's so awesome. And we just recently had a chance to see you. Um, we're, we did a taping of the Pet Show with Dr. Katie Nelson. And when will that segment actually be airing? That will air this Saturday, actually, on uh, News Channel 8 here in Washington, D.C. Um, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And then by 11.30, when the show is over, it will be online on our Pet Show blog on WJLA.com. Awesome. So for folks who don't know you, um, could you just give a little background about who you are, a little bit about yourself and what you do, and then we'll hop right into the hot topic today. Okay. Uh, well, I am um, a woman who wears many hats, as most women, uh, as most women these days tend to do. Um, I am a veterinarian. You already mentioned that part. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, I live here in Washington D.C. Uh, but I am a Louisiana girl. I am a country girl at heart. Grew up on a farm in South Louisiana, um, so I've I've forever got that in my heart. And I think that's where I got my love of animals. Um, was growing up with you know, horses and cows and dogs and cats and chickens and rabbits and goats and we <laughs> had it all. And, uh, I, um, you know, I, I went to vet school, or I went to college to become an MD, and after working at a human hospital for three days, um, I said, this is nothing I can ever possibly do, and I had one of those moments, as you do, and I said, what is it that I really love, and I said, I really love animals, and that's what I want to do, and I've never looked back, um, so I've had sort of an unusual career path, I would say. Um, I did start out in your typical practice um, in North Carolina, is where I first started working, mm -hmm. um, and after a couple years, I went into a corporate practice. I actually worked for a pet food company for quite a few years. And while I was there, they wanted me to do some media for them. And so I got media training. And after all of that, years and years later, um, I now am primarily uh, a media person. Um, I have a television show, like you mentioned, um, on News Channel 8 in Washington, D.C., called The Pet Show with Dr. Katie. We've been doing that for two and a half years. Um, I work for WTOP Radio, which is where I am right now. I'm Dr. Paws for WTOP Radio. And um, I also am an animal health reporter for, um, for the local ABC7 station here. And I do some national media as well. So yesterday I was just on the Meredith Vieira show. That should air uh, next week. Um, so yeah, I get to do a lot of fun things that um, you know with pets and uh, promoting adoption and promoting pet health, and um, it really is really my passion. And um, I also practice. I practice one day a week, and I have two kids and three, four letters. <laughs> and um, oh my gosh, I thought I was busy. I, I don't know. Now I, I'm feeling like I need to go do something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. Um, you are so immersed in media, obviously, and um, blog pause. Our bloggers are comprised primarily of pet bloggers and lifestyle bloggers who have a pet focus. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions we get a lot: um, bloggers are at various stages of their career. So some people are brand new. Others, like myself, we've been doing this for a number of years. How can I get the media to notice me? is uh, one of the hottest questions that we get at Blog Pause, and that's something that many of the bloggers who are watching this asked me to ask you. Yeah. So what might be a couple tips you could give to pet bloggers who would be interested in having traditional media cover their stories? Yeah. Well, I mean, the biggest tip I can give, really, is that it, it has to be news worthy because um, you know, if you're looking for someone to do a news story on it it has to be news worthy and a lot of things might be nice and it might be a fun story to read about but it's not necessarily news worthy and that's something that um, I've had to really learn what that means over the past few years because you know, I, I was guilty of the same thing. I was like, oh my God, this is such a sweet story. I want to tell the world about it. And then my news director looks at me and she's like, uh, no, moving right along, you know. <laughs> right, and right. So you really do need to make something new and unique. If you've got a really powerful, really great story, you've got to make it to where the news person is going to see this as something that no one else has covered. That's another thing is that, you know, this story was on CNN yesterday and I want my local news people to do it, they're not going to send a reporter out to you know, cover something that's already been covered. Mm -hmm. 
because they've got a lot of other things that they need to be doing. And for them to pull a reporter and a cameraman and send them to do something, it needs to be new and unique. And it can't have been already covered on three other stations because they're just not going to waste their time on that. Right. Um, so making it enticing, new, unique, and um, you know, really, really relatable, and also making it a story that they can promote on air. What is something that people really want to see? You know, like when you hear these teases, you know, and coming up next, we've got blah, 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 you know, you go, oh, I'm going to hang around through this commercial break for that. So right. it's something that they can promote that is going to be exciting, exciting too. So, you know, again, just because it's a really nice story doesn't mean it's going to get on the news. Um, you know, you have to kind of look at it from the news person's perspective and realize that, you know, it's not usually the, the nicest, sweetest things get, that, that get on the air. It's the stuff that has a bit of an angle to it and, you know, potentially something that people can learn from, um, you know, or sort of an expose type thing. Those are always exciting. Um, but you really do have to make it exciting for them. And the other thing is to, um, you know, news people are ADD, totally, a hundred percent ADD. They've got the attention span like this, you know, of mm -hmm. a flea. And so, if you're sending a press release, you've got to catch them in the subject line. Mm -hmm. You don't interest. I I can't tell you the number of press releases that I get a week. I mean, I I, I would venture to say. Three, four hundred a week, I would guess. Mm -hmm. And you know, my show has four segments a week, um, okay. and I do a news segment a week, um, and I do some talk shows and stuff every week. So I may get six of those stories every week and do something with them. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't catch me in the subject line, you know, then then I'm probably going to look at it and go, eh, nope, read that before, eh, nope, read that before. Right. So, got to catch them in the subject line and then that first paragraph has to hit you hard. You know, it has to tell you enough of the story to get you interested to read the rest of it. Um, right. Because, I mean, I have nine email accounts. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. I do. I have nine email accounts. I have all these different press releases that are coming in and, you know, if it doesn't catch me, I just flat out don't have time to read them all. And mm -hmm. so, I'm not the only person that's that way. I mean, the you know, reporters and everybody that I work with, they're the same way. Um, so you've really got to make that first paragraph very powerful. You've got to make that subject line enticing, and you've got to really make them want to open it up. That's the big thing. Is you've got to make them want to open it up. So just a mass blast press release that you're just kind of, you know, spraying it out to all the different reporters and hoping someone picks it up, that's not perhaps the best method. No, it's not ideal. And, um, you know, I get, and I get irritated too because I... I have a lot of PR people that are emailing me all the time about this, that, and the other, and it's like you, you can tell that it's a mass press release that just has my name attached yeah. to it because of their program because it's going to be, you know, I do animal stuff, and mm -hmm. I'll get something about, you know, some human pharmaceutical drug that's on a trial or whatever, and right. I'm, you know, I'm going to know that person's name, and mm -hmm. I'm going to know that when they send me things that they're just sending me stuff, that they're not actually targeting me. So mm -hmm. it really is better if you know the reporter that you're writing to and personalize it. You know, right. uh, you know, know that they're a dog person or a cat person or whatever. And how do you know that? That's because you've spent your time networking and that is probably the biggest key to this whole thing is that you know, you can't sit back and just send out a bunch of emails and expect, you know, people to go, oh my God, they sound great. I want to have them on air, you know. Right, you right. really spend some time networking with people and um, it's not going to hurt you to get some media training too because there's nothing worse being the show host than to have someone come on and you're trying to pull things out of them right. while on the air. You know, you can right. be a great writer, you can be a passionate speaker, but when you get that camera turned on and you go blank, people are going <laughs> to Right. Where can a blogger, um, when you say media training, so say I'm somebody, I'm sitting in the middle of the country, I've been blogging, I love everything you're telling me and I'm learning, where can I get media training? What, what, what can someone do if they just have no clue what that means? 
there are some great online courses. Um, there really, truly are, and they're going to be interactive courses, and they're not super expensive. I mean, you could spend a couple hundred dollars on an online media training course, and they're really going to teach you how to write talking points, how to hit talking points, um, you know, how to be comfortable on air, um, and you know, not trying to say that it's all about appearance. You've got to care about your appearance too. When you're going to go on camera, you cannot show up in a cat sweatshirt with no makeup on. You can't do it. Right. You know, I mean, right. You've got to, and for <laughs> men, you need to have a collared shirt or at least, you know, you don't have to be in a suit and tie, but mm -hmm. you've got to look nice. You know, don't show right. up in a t shirt, a rescue t shirt. And I, I have a lot of people that do that. You know, you show up in a t-shirt with a rescue logo on it, and I appreciate what you're doing. You're trying to get your logo out there, but send me your logo, and I'll put it on a lower third on air. Sure. No, sure. What nice. about um, radio press that is not on camera? So if I want the local media, a journalist in my area, to cover me, or I have people say, how can I get in USA Today? Mm -hmm. um, you know, my thing is always have you tried your local press first. Yeah. Um, what what sort of pitches or what would you recommend for a how to find the right person to contact and b what that pitch would look like? Yeah. Well, the biggest thing, especially for local media, is networking. Figure out where these people are going to be, what events they're going to be going to, etc., and go to them mm -hmm. and meet them because there's nothing better than meeting that person, you know, in person, shaking that person's hand and making that personal contact. I can tell you that that's what I did, um, you know, six, seven years ago whenever I started doing this locally was I bought tickets to Humane Society events and I would go to different events and I would meet people that I wanted to know. And right. I started socializing with them, I started networking with them, I started showing them what it is that I can do and that's how I made the progress and realized that you know, you're not going to immediately get in USA Today. It, it's, right. just not, it's not going to happen. You have to be realistic and you have to have realistic goals. You know, you need to get an article in your local newspaper first mm -hmm. or maybe do a call-in interview to a local radio show. But, you know, you've got to be realistic about that and hone your skills because it is a skill. It is a skill being on air. It is a skill being on radio. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it's something that I'm sorry, most people are not cut out to be on CNN. You know, there are a lot of people who are really good at what they do. Right. Uh, and they do a great job where they're doing it, but they're not necessarily the person that you want on CNN. Um, mm -hmm. But that person who is on CNN didn't just get there. That person that is on CNN started out in local media. That person started out doing smaller versions of what they're doing now, and they continued to work hard and hone their, their skills and get better and better and better at it. And there's nothing like practice for getting you to where you want to be. So if right. you have realistic goals and you work hard to hone your skills and continue to, to you know, work on that skill set, then you can get there. It's just not going to happen overnight you know again I mean right. I've been doing seven years here in DC and it's just this year that I've actually done some really great national shows so it's been a long process there's been you've a paid lot your of dues you've paid your dues and you've been there and I mean I've been following you so for folks who aren't familiar with you, you you've been you've been really doing this for a while and um, you can tell it shows in what you're doing and, and where you're pitching and where you're getting getting picked up um, one of the things that bloggers ask us is okay, I'm just a blogger, or um, why would mainstream media be interested in me? Do you think pet bloggers are being viewed more seriously these days? And um, if I'm pitching as a pet blogger to someone like yourself or to a newspaper, would I be taken seriously? You can be. Uh, you certainly can be, but it really is going to, you know, it's going to depend on how you're pitching yourself. Um, you know, if you come in as, I'm just a pet blogger, um, then no, they're not going right. to take But if you come in as you know someone who who really works hard and and does tell some good stories and and you know you really you really truly are out there um, working to become a a source for people on whatever your specific topic is, you know it, it's all about presentation. It really truly mm -hmm. is, and um, you know you absolutely can be taken seriously, no doubt about it. Absolutely, you can be, 
but it's going to be all about the presentation and you need to know what's on your blog too because if somebody's going back and looking through it um, you know they're going to take what you wrote two years ago just as seriously as what you wrote last week so you know make sure that what you're presenting to the world is what you really truly want to present to the world um, you know so there may need to be a little bit of blog cleanup a little social media cleanup right. before you get right. up here and really start exactly pitching. Exactly. Um, Yvonne yeah. DeVita, who is our co-founder at Blog Pause, is asking a question of, is local better than national press and don't you want to get more so shouldn't you be targeting national media? Um, national media is going to be so incredibly overwhelmed with everything that they get um, that, you know, my recommendation is that you start with local media. Sure. Mm -hmm. Is national media better? Of course. I mean, naturally. The Today Show is better than the Pet Show with Dr. Keaty. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They have a lot more coverage. It's, you know, a lot more people are watching it. No doubt about it. But they also, whereas I'm getting a few hundred press releases a week, they're getting a few hundred press releases before noon. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be a needle in a haystack um, unless you've got something that really makes you stand out. And if you've got that, fantastic pick out of them. Um, right. But, you know, realizing that you really need to hone those skills and and be prepared in mm -hmm. case that national media comes to you um, you know you really need to be ready for that um, right it is a big deal it is a big right. deal and also realizing that you know you're probably going to have to invest in some of this stuff financially as well um, you know the today show doesn't pay for me to get on a train and come up to New York City and stay in a hotel and do their show they mm -hmm. don't that because they'll find somebody else that'll pay for their own way to get up there. Right, um, right. So, you know, don't expect that if they do make that phone call that they're going to say, oh, and by the way, we're going to buy your plane ticket and we're going to get you here and we'll put you up in a really nice hotel. So be prepared that if you are going to do this, it's going to be an outlay of your own money um, in it. order to Got build it. Because what you're doing is you're building a brand. And I guess that's probably some of the best advice that I can give is to say, choose what your brand is. Um, you know, and and don't don't deviate from that. You know, um, for okay. me, I'm a veterinarian. I'm a mom, um, and that's my shtick. That's what I do. I don't I don't go off on that. I don't talk about other things because that's me. That's my brand. Okay, um, we have a question from Lauren Dar, who is with the International Association of Pet fashion professionals and she wants to know if she were to pitch something like fashionable safety items for your pet is that catchy especially at the time of year when that might be more of a concern and people are out and about more with their pets I think that I think you really hit on something there Lauren is the is the timeliness of these stories really has to be appropriate um, you've got Halloween coming up um, you've got winter coming up where people are going to be putting coats and stuff on their pets and so making that timely absolutely is going to be more likely to catch um, someone's eye than if you send it let's say in the middle of May you know talking about fashionable pet items that may not be as much of interest right now because that would be the time of year that people are thinking about going on vacation or they're thinking about school letting out or whatever you know kind of think about what's on the minds of the reporters and their viewers um, and be very timely with what you're sending out and you're definitely more likely to get um, a response you know, when it when it fits um, than just some random time of year. So should I send something out, dear reporter, or how can I find out who I need to be connecting with? What's the best way, if I don't have a few thousand dollars to invest in a PR database, to yeah. find out who I need to be connecting with? Well, I mean, I, I personally, I've never had a PR database. I, I, I don't know. Nice. I've, I've never worked that way. Um, I, uh, I can tell you that being on Haro, um, H-A-R-O, help a reporter out, mm -hmm. um, dot com, that's a, that's a really great resource and a really great way to kind of get in front of um, some people who are writing sometimes bigger stories, either for magazines or, um, you know, or news media or other sort of print media. Um, that's a great resource and it's, and it's free. You can just sign up for that as a resource for that. Um, and then, you know, again, just putting in the time. I mean, really going to where you think these people are going to be, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even just calling the news desk at your local TV station or radio station and say, do you have someone at your station that covers animal-related 
topics, you know. And if you do, um, then you certainly can, uh, you know, contact that person. So, you know, at my television station, I think you would call the front, the, you would call the news desk, and they would say, "Do you have anybody that covers animal stories?" And they would say, "Yeah, we have Dr. Katie. Well, do you have an email for her that I can send her some ideas?" Absolutely, they're going to give you that. Um, so you can certainly do that. And think about like Jill Rappaport at the Today Show, or mm -hmm. I don't. Know, Today show anymore, but um, Jill Rappaport at NBC has always been kind of their person that does their today, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, their animal stuff. Or um, Debbie Turner from CBS. She used to be on the morning show. She's former yes. Mississippi, so she's a veterinarian. She's the one for CBS that did a bunch of their animal stuff. Um, you know, and then you think about like Sanjay Gupta. He's the guy who does the stuff for CNN on medical stuff. You know, so you you kind of have these different people that you associate with doing these types of stories and maybe locally you have those same people too and mm -hmm. um, so but it's just, it's just a phone call or an email and, and finding out who they are and how right. you can get in touch with them. So well some that, of our um, that, that that's awesome advice and um, I'm thinking I'm, I'm looking at some of the people who are in our chat um, Amy Beltran's here and Tiffany from Diamond Dogs and Ruth Epstein um, some of the questions that are coming in I'm thinking okay I write to you I've got a great pitch. I made sure to spell your name right. It went to the right email. Should I call you several times to see if you got that pitch and, and harass the heck out of you to make sure you're going to cover me because I'm so awesome? No. No. <laughs> okay. That's the very first thing you can possibly do to turn somebody off. <laughs> okay. You, know, you certainly wait a week, wait 10 days or so, send a very nice, friendly forward of that email and just say, hey, just checking in to see what your thoughts were on what I sent you last week and leave it at that. That's okay. the very thing that you can do um, because, you know, quite possibly we look through it and it just didn't catch our eye and we hit delete. But mm -hmm. if you send it to us again, maybe something has happened in the last week, 10 days, two weeks or whatever since you sent it and maybe we go, huh, you know what, actually that is better now that I read it the second time. Um, or maybe it's just they're going to write back, you know what, nope, sorry, right now that doesn't fit what we're doing. And at least you've gotten confirmation that they've received it. Um, so, but, you know, calling, multiple emails, all of that, I mean, if you if you want them to write you off completely, that's the definite thing to do. Um, but my recommendation is always week to 10 days because they're very busy. Give them a week or so if they haven't written you back. Shoot them a very quick one line, just checking in to make sure you're received and what are your thoughts, and then leave it at that. If you don't hear back from them again, wait another week or 10 days and send them something new. Don't send them the same thing again. Send them something So don't new. call them, so you would not recommend picking up a phone and calling that reporter or that news desk? Unless you know them personally, okay. then mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't. Um, I mean, if you know that they're, and you can attach a read, like a red receipt to your email so that you know that they actually read it, you know that it's not getting spammed or whatever. Right, right. You do that just to make sure that you've got the proper email address. Um, you know, or you can also just say in that forward that you send them, um, checking in to make you received it, what are your thoughts, and is there a person who um, you think this would resonate with more? You know, if right. it doesn't resonate with you, is there someone who you think it would resonate with more? Um, because it may be that you've sent it to a reporter who has done some animal stories in the past, but that's not really their passion, mm -hmm. you know. There is somebody else that they would go, oh yeah, you know, for at our news station it would be either me or there's a lady named Jenny Doran. And Jenny Doran is like in love with animal stories. And so if it's something that isn't like Dr. Katie-ish, you know, with sort of a medical angle or some sort of a other angle to it, then a lot of times if it's just kind of what we call a fluff piece, haha. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, if it's more of like a feel-good type story, then we'll get Jenny to do it. Because um, she's, you know, teeny little blonde you know, little cute young thing, um, and those sorts of stories really fit her personality very That's well. Right. So, um, right. so it may be that you know your story may not resonate with me, but I might send it over to Jenny, and Jenny goes, "Oh my gosh, I love that." So okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of pet projects, um, one of the things that I wanted to have you talk about was a passion project that you're working on, and we're going to um, actually put on Twitter asking anyone that's watching this to hashtag pet project. And if you could be the first to kick that off and tell us what your new pet project is. And I'm thinking bloggers from Blog Pods might be interested in covering this. Mm -hmm. So if you could tell us about the Tell Them I Was Kind project. Yeah. I, um, you know, we mentioned earlier I'm a mom. 
And um, you know, I, I think for anyone out there who has children or even or even pets, I mean, you know that these little these little people become your entire life. And so, um, December fourteenth of twenty twelve um, was the day that the Sandy Hook shooting happened. And um, I was at my news station when it happened, and I was watching the coverage as it was coming in of what was going on. And it was everything within my power not to drive directly to my son's school and scoop him up and take him home because he was he was five at the time, um, and these children who were killed were six, and so I was very very impacted by that personally as a mom. And um, about two months later in February, I was reading um, a People magazine while I was getting my hair cut, and um, they had an article on the children or the the families of Newtown. And there was an article in there about a woman named Jenny Hubbard. Her daughter Catherine was this beautiful little redheaded little girl who was one of the first graders who was killed. And um, Jenny and her husband and their son Freddie um, had decided that they were going to donate the money that came in um, in honor of Catherine to a uh, to their local animal shelter. The local animal shelter was overwhelmed because Catherine. Well, the reason they did is because Catherine was an animal. Lover, she was such an animal person, and uh, she would get her allowance and save her allowance and insist that they go buy blankets and pet treats and take them to the shelter. That's what this uh. child did with her with her allowance. And so, they, you know, long story short, there's and there what they've started to do is they they're creating an animal sanctuary in Newtown, Connecticut, in um, in Catherine's honor, the Catherine Violet Hubbard Animal Sanctuary. And I was honored enough to meet Jenny Hubbard, and I, I had her down to D.C., and I did my show with her, and have become friends with Jenny. And um, she's one of the most inspiring people I've ever met. There's, I can't fathom that there would be a person on this earth that would meet Jenny Hubbard and not be changed and touched by, by her and her passion um, for what it is that she's doing to, to honor her daughter's legacy. And so um, I'm actually working with Connecticut Public Television, and we are doing a documentary on... Um, sort of the progress of building this this sanctuary in Catherine's honor, and we sort of are embedded with um, the Hubbard family um, to tell their story and to tell Catherine's story. And the reason that it's titled "Tell Them I Am Kind" is because Catherine loved butterflies, and um, mm -hmm. would um, she was one of those little people who could put her hands out, and the butterflies would come to her and mm -hmm. play with them, and they would fly around her. But she always made sure that they went back to where she found them, and she would whisper and say, "Tell them." Tell your friends that I'm kind, because she knew that if she told them that, then more of them would come back to her the same day. So that's why we've titled our, our documentary "Tell Them I'm Kind." And um, you know, it is. Is there a link for that um, that folks that are watching this can can visit? Yeah, it's actually tell them I am kind dot org, um, okay. and uh, you can go there and learn more about our documentary. We're we're doing an Indiegogo uh, campaign right now to raise money for it. And uh, because it is public television, there's no funding, and we're not making a penny off of it. We're doing this because this is our, our passion project. So that's um, your pet project, and I'm actually blogging that tomorrow on my Phytos of Reality blog. So for anybody who didn't catch this or is watching it later, um, this is definitely something I want to help you get the word out there about. And I'm, you know, I, I can't even breathe right now just hearing the story. So um, well, that's the kind of thing that, you know, this is the sort of story and the the hashtag pet project that people could really get around. Um, I, I think Dr. Katie and that that's phenomenal that you're you're actually involved in it and that this is going to be a documentary, correct? Yes, yes it is. Mm -hmm. um, and as of now we're set to air June of uh, next year, which would have been Catherine's birthday. Her birthday was oh. June. And so that um, that is what uh, where you can find that hopefully next year. Awesome. Well, I have a just, we're going to go probably about three or four minutes over because we've had quite a few questions come in if if you don't mind. Um, one of the ones that we got from Ruth Epstein, she's asking, she said, I'm still confused about mass mailing journalists. Is it worth doing that or not? I, I think you really did a great job addressing it if you just want to touch base for like 30 seconds on that. Yeah. I mean, I would say you as as long as you know that the people that you are emailing are the people that you should be emailing, um, and if there is a way in your software in your software to individually address it, you know, um, dear reporter is usually not yeah. going to catch attention. Um, but you know, dear Dr. Katie, 
is definitely going to catch my attention more than that. So if there's a way to individualize it um, to each person receiving it um, and just to make sure that the person, the people who are receiving it are the appropriate people for that, um, then I think that they're worth it. Um, but I think that you're going to probably get more play from the individual ones, even if it's just this, you know, the the same email, but you're just changing the name and sending it to the right people. Um, okay. Locally, I think you might get more play from doing that. Um, and tell us where folks can find more out about you. What's the best place to hook up with you? Where are you online? And again, when your show airs and how folks can watch it. My show airs. Um, we only air locally here in Washington D.C. on News Channel Eight. Um, however, you can find the back episodes on my website um, and as well as on the WJLA.com website. Um, so uh, I'm actually going to send that link right Okay. Actually watch the episode um, as well. So, um, yeah, but we, we air at 11 a.m. on News Channel 8. You can find me on my website, which is thepetshow.tv. Um, and all of my stuff is there, articles, bio, contact info, all of that is right there on the petshow.tv. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you at my fundraiser to help homeless cockers. I know you'll be there, the Wiggle Butts Go Hollywood, and Love we're all name. excited to see you. Um, thank you for having us on your show, and thank you so much for joining us today. This is actually going to be archived the moment you and I get done, so if anyone's missed it and you're watching it now, make sure you check out Dr. Katie. Check out her Tell Them I Was Kind project, and um, we look forward to getting to know you even better and hopefully seeing you at Blog Pause in Nashville. I am looking forward to that. I truly am. The country girl gets to go back to the South. I, like I know. As soon as you said, I had no idea on your background, so um, I'm thrilled that you know we'll bring you back to your Southern roots. That works for me. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Katie. All right. Thank you guys so much for having Bye -bye. me. Bye-bye.